Hi guys, back with another video for you today. Guess who's back in the studio? Donna Dana knows, with the nose nose. Yay. Is it Donna or Dana? Uh, they say Dana back home, but apparently it's very hard to pronounce in America, so I go by Dana. I don't, I don't mind Donna, but I like Dana. Fine. Whistle and I'll Remember that <laughs> brand? Uh, the perfumery brand? Yeah. Of course I do. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, we we're talking about Vetiver today because we, last time they were trying to yeah, vote. Yeah, we haven't, we haven't connected since, mm -hmm. uh, what, three and a half years ago yeah. and we mentioned what videos we wanted to do in the future. One of them was Vetiver. We mm -hmm. did also were just uh, talking about Musk. So we're going with Vetiver Thank because you. you love Vetiver. Because I love Vetiver. It's what is it about Vetiver? It's my most favorite note. I think I like the simplicity of it. And I also like that it's a, it's a complete fragrance altogether. So if you have just Vetiver, even if you get just the oil, it has so many facets to it, kind of like vanilla, which is now overdone, kind of like patchouli, which can also be overbearing and overdone. But um, Vetiver kind of takes all the boxes for me, and um, I think in any combination I've seen it, smelled it, um, or felt it, um, it kind of makes sense. I love the versatility of it and um, how unassuming, it's unpretentious, you know? I love but, it. But you know, uh, vetiver I see a lot in men's fragrances. I don't see it as much in women's fragrances. So how did you get into vetiver and start appreciating it? Well, first of all, I don't think that way. Um, but it's a fair question because um, I mentioned that it's my favorite notes and material all the time. People are bored of listening to me talk about it. Um, so I got a lot of messages and a lot of hate for it. I've even gotten boys and men coming to me and saying, you know, they would never date somebody who is masculine enough to wear vetiver because it's so masculine. And I... Okay can only say that you know there's no danger you would <laughs> date somebody like me <laughs> no it's a it's a, what people don't know is vetiver is in about 90 percent of fragrances the fact base note right it's it's a it's a base note even though um it's a lighter note than other base notes that we know about about but um it's everywhere and it's always been everywhere because it's unique because it can't be replicated in the lab it's one of the few instances mm -hmm. where if you see vetiver in a fragrance you know that there's very very in it, which is kind of nice. Um, and also, it's a good fixative. You know, it fixates the other notes, it lasts forever, it's kind of dense. Mm. Um, so from a functional perspective, it's in all the fragrances that we know about. If you if you see it there, it's 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 in the fragrance. Including so, Guerlain's Vetiver. Including <laughs> every... Yes, including Guerlain's Vetiver. And they did two versions. Have you smelled the Pourfum? version of Guerlain? I've never smelled the Parfum yeah, version. You have to. Oh, where it's is hard, it? It's very hard to get our it's hands on it, get. but I, I have people. Oh, okay. I know people. If you want to find out more about Vetiver from Dana and I, or Donna and I, then please stay tuned. So what exactly is Vetiver? Vetiver is a material that is widely used in perfumery. It's a grass. It's related to um, any grain, any you know wheat, for example. Um, it grows in many, many tropical um, areas and it produces this oil that is then used in perfumery as a base note. Um, I don't know how you would describe pure vetiver and I know you've smelled it. You must have smelled oh, pure many vetiver times. before, yeah. many times. I know you like it too. Um, but it smells smoky sometimes, sometimes it's lemony, sometimes a bit moldy, very earthy, very grassy, woody, very grassy, woody. woody. Yeah. Sometimes it's sweet. Um, it, it sometimes smells like chai almost, you know, like a white tea. Sometimes mm. it has many, many facets. I've smelled it with a little bit of um, chocolatey, tannic aspects wow. okay. to it. Okay, okay. Um, haven't, haven't experienced that. But it's a kind of neutral green, you know, it's not sharp green like ivy or violet leaf or other greens okay. out there. Um, it's a very delicate and very airy and very cooling um, green. So, um, the word vetiver, I'm sure many people know, um, comes from literally pulling a root out. It's a Tamil word. Interesting. Um, and Did you say Tamil word? Tamil. So um, it's widely spread in South Southeast Asia. Um, it's being um, uh, cultivated in either Réunion, which is a tiny island in the Indian Madagascar. Ocean. Off almost, of yeah, off, yeah, almost in the Indian Ocean. Um, and Can you then, say that again? Reunion? Reunion. <laughs> Le Reunion. Um, 
Or the Bourbon Island. Okay. They, we also know of them because of the Bourbon Vanilla, which is theoretically the best one, but it's not. Mm. Because it's Vanilla not. comes from, Mad from uh, Mexico, and it's native to Mexico, and the best Vanilla, in my opinion, comes from there. But that's a different conversation. We'll talk about, we'll talk about Vanilla, vanilla another time, yeah. yeah. But um, it's called Bourbon because it was taken over by Le French. Because that's why it's called Le Réunion. Le Réunion. Okay. <laughs> so, so it's called the Bourbon Island. Not because of the drink, but because of the French. So when, when it says Bourbon Vetiver, it doesn't mean it's boozy. Correct. It's, it's just coming it's from Bourbon. from the island, also known as Bourbon, because colonialism, imperialism, all that stuff. Okay. Uh, and you got to be French. But today, most of it is cultivated in, in Haiti. And in fact, in the Caribbean, there's Haiti. a... Haiti. No, I know about Haiti, but I thought there was also cultivations from India. Correct. Correct. So there's okay. old, that's why I said Southeast Asia, that's why the name comes from there. Mm. Okay. Um, and Réunion and Haiti, mostly. Um, there are several um, sub strands, if you want. The main one is called, and I love this name, Chrysopogons Isanoides. <laughs> what the heck is that? <laughs> All right, so here's a fun fact. Did you know? Because I've never heard anybody talk about this before, and you know I'm a nerd for language as well. Zizanoides, uh, this is the Latin name. Zizanoides? Yes. Okay. If you see anything with Zizani Zizan, I've seen fragrances called Zizan or Zizani or something. Know that those are vetiver center oh, okay. centric, vetiver heavy, and so on and so forth. It's a good did you know in case you're looking for vintages if you're scouring the internet and you find something you don't know what it's about. If you see Zizan Zizani, it's vetiver centric fragrance, Very probably masculine. You know, you okay. know how to... it sounds feminine though. It does, but. Let me tell you why. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. Uh, in many of the aroma uh, therapy or aroma centric alternative medicines, practices, philosophies, and so on, okay. they say that you usually gravitate to the thing that you lack. So if I like vetiver, it's because I need what vetiver can solve within me. Vetiver is, yeah, that's what they say. Vetiver so is. So you need vetiver in your I life. I need vetiver in my life. Vetiver apparently is the calming oil. Okay, I can see why. There I you can go. see why. Thank you very much. Thank you. We know each other a little bit too well. But, yeah. But I'm that's, a little you too know, calm. I don't need vetiver it's anymore. The peace, it's the peace oil. It's okay. being used in practices to bring tranquility I didn't and know calm that. and all of that stuff. Okay. Now, Zizani. Zizanoides. Uh, uh, Zizanoides. Zizanoides uh, transferred in a lot of Latin and Indo-European Indo languages as Zizan, Zizani. Uh, Zizan is a root, right, for the language. Mm -hmm. Zizani, Zizan, always, always, in all the languages it was transferred to, means discord, argument, uh, petty yelling. Uh, wow. Uh, I'm learning you know, new stuff like, here. So, in the name of Vetiver, is the thing that Vetiver theoretically solves. Okay. If you look at these, I, I think it's a really cute, very nerdy, I'm sorry. <laughs> She's a little nerdy. Very nerdy element uh, related to Vetiver, but I think it's fascinating and I'm sure there's a connection between all of these things. Mm. So, if you hear any science person talk about these things, you heard it here first. So, this is a grass. So it's a grass. It's a grass. In and all those words, it's just a grass. <laughs> in all those words, it's just a grass. Uh -huh. uh, it grows very tall. It's being used in a lot of different ways. Um, for perfumery, we need the roots. The roots are filaments that are like wires, and they so grow. So it comes under the earth. It goes under the so earth. So what happens to the top? The top is just. It looks like a grass. Gr Sharp, sharp, very yeah. tall, uh, reedy type of leaf. Mm -hmm. The ones that give you paper cups. Oh, yeah, cup, I know cups. those. I know those. Um, it can be taller than you are. Okay. It goes pretty wide. Okay. Um, and underneath, the roots can go three yards, four yards into the soil. Because they're so ramified and so many filaments, they use them for um, keeping the soil together. So um, mm. to prevent against soil erosion and all that stuff. Okay. But everywhere it's being grown, they used every single part of it. So, for example, because it's it's a cooling agent, they use the leaves. They kind of make baskets or uh, things to sleep on or blinds. So it's the not windows. only used for perfumes. No, it's used for things around the house. Kind of like hemp. A little bit, <laughs> yes, and calming. See, there you go. Same thing. Um, Can you yeah. smoke it? No, but they flavor tobacco with it. So yeah, okay. I guess All I right. guess you can. I've had it in syrups. They use it to flavor, you know, um, shaved ice, for example, or desserts. Um, I've actually drank 
water soaked with vetiver. Yeah. It has a very interesting flavor. It does. It's like licking the earth. <laughs> licking the earth. <laughs> licking the roots. That sounds really bad, but you know what I mean. Um, they use it for that. They make briquettes, you know, like little compacted, mm, okay. uh, dried up things that they can burn to use okay. for something. Things. They use it for fuel there. Um, they use it for aromatherapy and medicine, Ayurveda, um, you know. Ayurveda. The, and things of the soul, mind, soul. Um, so it's Ayurvedic? It's everything, really. Um, and it's a very good export uh, product because it's easy to grow, nothing kills it. It has nothing eats it. Hmm? It has no predators of any kind, no wow. insects attack because it. Because it's got a maybe fragrance to it. Maybe that's why. Um, it doesn't multiply, so it's not invasive. You know, just you, the only way to multiply is to get a chunk of it with the roots and then replant it somewhere okay, else. But okay. it doesn't make seeds that can take over something. It grows really fast. It, it needs practically no water. It's like a miracle wow, plant. Wow, wow, Which is why I love it so much. You know, I'm Eastern European. I love things that don't take a lot of attention and they kind of do what they're supposed to do and they do it well. So this is one of those materials that don't... That's, that's sustainable. That's, mm. you know, it's very okay. important. Um, so... Do the vetiver varieties smell different? They say they do. Um, I have so I've heard of Java vetiver. Yes, for uh, the longest time it was... Haiti vetiver. Yes. And then of course the Reunion vetiver. Yes. Or Bourbon vetiver. Um, I think, mm, I, they're, apart from different species, I mean, if you have a very, very sensitive nose and you, you can, I guess, differentiate just like in wines, it's the same grape, but it's grown in different soils and different acidities, different conditions, they smell differently. Mm. But I think more than that, um, there's several subspecies of oh. vetiver. Okay. The, for example, there's an, uh, an African African version, there's a Burmese version and so on and so forth in Myanmar. Um, Burma. Oh, Burmese version, um, wow. So there, you know, there's sub, uh, what do you call it? breeds, some subspecies? What do you call Subspecies, yeah. Thank you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Substrands. So those do smell differently, okay. but I think more than that, it's how it's being extracted. So if I was a perfumer, I wouldn't say, oh, I gotta have the Java vetiver because it's got this kind of characteristic to it. Or I gotta have the Haiti vetiver because it's does, you, you can. I, I think you can because, uh, you know, with the place where it's been grown comes the method of extraction that is very particular to that place. Okay. The same way you can have bubbles made in other parts of the world from the same grape. Mm -hmm. The technology, the methodology, the traditional part of the local uh, smell culture imprints a, 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 a different result, I think, from each uh, okay. place to another. For example, in India, they like um, a lot of distillations to be done in copper. Um, oh. um, so would pots. that change the smell a little? That changes the smell. Copper definitely tastes, smells differently. I and don't it like also the smell of copper. And it also changes the color hmm. because the results in color as opposed to a very deep, very sticky brown um, oil, you get a green oil. Interesting. And it's brilliant, it's like brilliant green. It's like a deep absent Mm, green. I like that color. And that, that affects, you know, the results later on because the copper creates verde gris when it's in touch with some parts of um, uh, the acidic elements in, in the distillation process. So it becomes green, you know. You know that's from there and it will smell differently than, than other distillations. Okay. Um, you mentioned uh, they come from tropical um, mm -hmm. Settings or countries. Yes. So can we can we grow yes. vetiver? Yes. We can. Um, I th I actually know of a couple of growers in Arizona. Oh. Um, who Is it tropical there? It's hot, hot. enough. Oh, it's hot, it's hot enough. Hot enough. Okay. And if you have access to water, like I said, it lives. It survives on very little. You don't need um, a lot of water, and you don't need any particular type of soil. So if it's very compacted, even clay. You know, in Arizona is very clay. Um, okay. Uh, dirt. Uh, they actually use it to plant next to trees that need more airy soil. Mm. And because there is no airy soil, they make it airy by, by planting uh, vetiver next to them. Okay. So, um, yeah, it can grow anywhere. So, do these people that grow it in Arizona use this vetiver for perfumery or what do they use it for? Um, <laughs> You're gonna laugh. No, they don't use it for perfumery, even though they're considering it because they're, they're being contacted left and right. Okay. They use it for mulch. <laughs> mulch. Okay. No, they use it for uh, <laughs> they use it for airing the soil. 
like I said, and they use it, yeah, they keep, uh, the, you know, giving it haircuts and whatever results is apparently very good to create mulch and smel a smelly orchard and that's what they use it for. It's okay. very interesting. All right. So um, is vetiver expensive then? Is it an expensive ingredient in perfumery? Or it sounds like it's not expensive because it's used so much in base notes. True. Um, it's not expensive. Uh, although the yield is very small. Oh. Um, Per unit of weight, you get nowadays you get about 0.5 percent oil. Uh, back in the day, when they used to do different kinds of distillations, um, they used to get more. Um, you know, uh, distillation was invented a long time ago, but like ninth century, some mm. Arab scientists invented distillation process, steaming, all that fun stuff. And by the 12th century, uh, they were already exporting the oil everywhere. But what they did? Did you was, say 12th century? Yes. They were so vetiver has been using for this long? It's been exported as a as an aromatic compound for perfumery since the 12th century. Okay. Um, I think it's up there with resins. Uh, wow. You know, because they're in, in maybe some of the bigger flowers, the, the roses, that um, has been constituting a, a material for perfumery for this long. You know, everything else is kind of like either pre that by a few thousand years or much more recent. Interesting. Um, so yeah, uh, but the distillation process used to yield more because it took longer. They would take, you know, 12 hours, 18 hours, two, four, 10 days for um, a distillation process. So then you would get more, more oil. But because perfumers are very particular now and they want to uh, be able to control all these different facets mm. to um, vetiver, um, they do it faster and they do it in a more controlled manner so they get a specific aspect of, um, of all the different subnotes um, more pre um, prevalent if you want if they control the, the, the distillation process. So what kind of sub, uh, you know, sub notes or facets do we get from vetiver so, or can we get from vetiver? So, um, do we know? Yeah, I mean, uh, you can get the earthy, you can get woody, um, and which is sometimes puts it very close to like precious woods. Um, you can get the hay, very apt for fougere mm. um, and that kind of um, a subtext. Sometimes you get um, almost like a pomelo grapefruit kind of. I noticed that subtone. there's a lot of fragrances that vetiver and grapefruit. Yep. Vetiver is that why? Um, it might be because it already yeah it already, it already has, has a vetiver, uh, the, like a the, grapefruitiness. The uh, and that comes from something called epivone. So um, epivone. So the the chemical uh, composition of vetiver is very hard to establish because there are about a hundred different compounds mm. in vetiver. Um, the most important of them is the alcoholic. Uh, compound. It's called vetiverol. Anything with all at the end is alcohol. All okay. <laughs> chemically in that category. All, all. right. So about a third of um, vetiverol is compounded by three different elements, and each of them has different facets. Apart from vetiverol, there's this epivone thing, which is um, a bitter, can go to grapefruit compound and stuff. Okay. Um, and that is very often used by. Um, perfumeries or labs to release what they call captives and this is something that I need more information on because okay. there's, I couldn't find a lot on this I'm not part of the industry you're not part of the industry we can only like hearsay but if you can verify if anybody can verify okay. this kind of information Tell us. write a so, comment uh, yeah so captives as far as I can gather are launches of uh, materials that um, labs can isolate or uh, manufacture that can be launched uh, for the mass public to use but as far as i gather it it's not the best version of that new molecule mm. or new isolate or okay. new you know what i mean so then you go to the perfumery congress they say we invented a new blah 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 it has these facets here's a version of it and okay. then the mass can take it they can use it without copyright or whatever licensing whatever they need to pay uh, whereas the lab or the house retains the rights for the best version of I that see. molecule I see. that's I see. what i understand again 
I, it's not verified because nobody's talking about these things. So if you know anything about the politics of captives or can give us more information about this, that, that would um, be great. Now, Epivone, I made a, a mistake. Epivone is not, um, is not the bitter compound. Epivone, um, Epivone. Epivone is um, actually a copyrighted name uh, of a molecule that's been biosynthesized. So Who somebody's... Owns it? I don't know. Oh. So somebody, a lab, created something that they called Epivone with the aid of microorganisms. So now they're using bacteria, they're using um, um, virus shells, they're using all sorts of like little things to decompose materials wow. so that the result is then uh, very close chemically to what is active in, in this case, Vetiver. So there is a company that is doing that. So okay. they're recreating one of the things that they um, they found in, okay. in Vetiver through the aid of microorganisms, which I think is phenomenal. That's amazing, yeah. Sounds useless, yeah. but to be honest, I'm like, why would you do that? Yeah. Um, but I'm sure there, there's a lot of application for this kind of effect. So you mentioned 1200s. When yes. was it first used in perfumery? Uh, and wasn't Guerlain's Vetiver like one of the the first perfumes from, for, you know, featuring vetiver, or did that's was a, the vetiver that's, used? That's a very fair question. Uh, so it's been used since the Babylonian Empire. So that's about seventeen hundred years ago. Um, we don't know of any brands from that time. Uh, so, sorry, seventeen hundred. <laughs> BC. BC. And I think this, yeah. I'm translating. BC. Um, so vetiver has been used in, in different ways. Probably um, either in some sort of fermentation applications. Mm. Some say um, uh, through um, macerating in different combinations, burning, fumigations, and so on and so forth. But okay. it wasn't used as oil until um, until ninth century okay. and when it started being distilled. So yeah, it's a long, long, long time track. Ago. But I think one of the vetiver. first vetiver fragrances happens to be Guerlain's vetiver, right? Or was it, uh, who's the other big brand, French brand? Coty? Not Coty, but um, they had a vetiver fragrance as well. Piver, uh, Le Long. No, these no. Are, these anyway, are... I'm drawing a blank right okay. now. We'll... So, um, I guess if you want to refer to modern Western perfumery, uh, yes, we can talk about Guerlain Vetiver, but I brought you something very interesting that I think is interesting. Um, that is very interesting. Right? So we were talking about the fact that vetiver is being uh, grown in the Caribbean, in Haiti. Uh, what we don't talk enough about, I'm going to show it to the camera if that's okay, what we, talk, we don't talk enough about is the fact that while America um, had either um, First Nations practices of perfuming, adorning the body with something that smells good, but didn't make smell into a product, mm. and the um, the English Protestants coming in didn't use anything cosmetically because they thought it's not you know not pure or not good for you or not dignified, not in accord with whatever the religion was asking them to do. The Caribbean for a variety of reasons, had a flourishing oh, wow. cosmetics and self-care or personal care Very interesting. industry at large for hundreds of years. So this was made in the 1890s. Can I smell it? Uh, you can smell it, but you don't want to smell it. Okay. <laughs> I wanted to show the bottle because the bottle shows another name for uh, vetiver. I don't think it's going to... <laughs> How does it do it? Um, the other name for vetiver is kus or hus or sometimes I've heard it with a glottal sound. Kus. Kus. No, kus. Kus. It's like when you... It's called a glottal sound. Kus. It, it took me forever to learn how to make it. So, um, kus or kush or hush. Um, you see the name here. This is uh, from Jamaica. But I have uh, versions of um, colognes and uh, perfume bottles from uh, Haiti, I have from the islands, from Antigua. I, I, this is I, beautiful. I, it's, it's very Art Nouveau and it's very... Benjamin's Triple Extract mm -hmm. Rousse Toilet so Water. At the moment when this came out, the Benjamin company was already flourishing and they were exporting mm. cosmetics through South America and all over the Caribbean. So wow. this is like a multinational, you know, uh, enterprise in the 1890s. Wow. So before Guerlain did anything to launch a vetiver-centric 
fragrance this was already on the market and wow. being exported out of uh, Jamaica into other Caribbean um, so we can't uh, buy this nations. anymore N n you can buy it if I I needed your car. <laughs> the only other bottle I know of is in the Smithsonian right now. Oh. Of this. The Smithsonian. The, yes. And how did you end up with the bottle? I have people. I'm good. <laughs> She's got people. I got connections. No, it, it was a lucky find. Okay. Um, not to say somebody would pay a lot of money for it, but it is rare and um, I keep it for documentation because you know I like to look into the history of uh, perfumery as well. Okay. So that's an, an interesting example. All right, so why don't we go ahead and talk about Guerlain's Vetiver, since we brought it up so much. This is a brand new bottle I just brought back from the UK in their newly redone bottles. Mm -hmm. So it's now in this kind of a bottle. Can I spray it? Yeah. Um, Are you a fan of the Guerlain vetiver? I'm a fan of all the vetivers, which is going to make this video very difficult for me because there's very little bad I can bring about in discussing a vetiver fragrance. Um, I think it's doing a very good job at treading the um, saltier aspects of vetiver um, lightly. Uh, because, in my opinion, if you're centering um, vetiver in a fragrance, which most fragrance makers don't do, unless they're very smart, uh, <laughs> uh, you can either go in a classic, uh, not-in-your-face, more sophisticated, atmospheric kind of fragrance, or you celebrate the, the deepest parts of vetiver. And in that case, you go salty, briny, it can get a little bit sulfuric, it can be, be a bit iodine -y to my nose. It mm. smells like a, the green uh, cover of a walnut. Have you ever smelled green walnuts? Oh God, we used to pickle, well not pickle, and make them into syrup. Okay. And Armenians so you know that preserve the whole thing. Smell. It's it's medicinal, a little bit smell. tannic, yeah. a little briny, mm -hmm. and uh, some applications of vetivers are like this. This treads it very light, very lightly. I think it's 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 uh, there's a reason for which it's a classic and it's going to stay a classic. It's it's very balanced. Um, there are some citrus undertones there. I smell. Juicy. There's a juiciness about it. Yeah. There's a lot of bergamot and a lot of um, uh, bitter no grape, orange. No grapefruitiness coming out there? Pomelo. Pomelo? I smell pomelo. Okay, okay. What do you smell? Something citrusy. Kind of a nondescript citrus. Well, now let's contrast that to... That's pretty good, actually. Even yeah. this new formulation, or I don't even know if it got changed or not, but... It's, it's cheaper to produce and more natural if you're using a higher concentration of vetiver versus something that's synthetic. Mm. If you're one of the people who wants to go a more naturalistic approach, it's safer to go with stuff that's vetiver-centric, because again, yeah. you know... They so don't... you mentioned saltiness. Why don't we try your... Yes. Vet, uh, uh, Anikutal, right? Which so is supposed to be very salty, right? These are the two that I brought that are um, to me classics and the reference points. Uh, the ultimate one that's hard to find and hard to replicate I have a is of it. the um, original Anikutal. You, you all know what it looks like. Um, but your bottle is green. The labeling is a little greener, so yours yes. probably must be very vintage compared to mine. Very old. And if you smell even the the. the it smells salt, sticky from how salty it is. It smells like civet to me. A little bit skanky, yeah. yes. It's, it's Can we smell it? Can we spray yeah, it? Yeah, absolutely. Go for it. Um, so that's that's my go-to reference point for uh, vitrofer-centric applications. No, it doesn't smell as skanky on, on no. the strip. So the skank is kind of like... I think it has costus in it, to be honest. Oh, the, the original. This is so different be, because it's also a vegetal, and it, it's so. I don't like costus. Skanky that you almost feel it's turned. It almost feels like the, the vintage of the wrong kind, right? A little bit. I don't like costus. Oh, it's awful. Um, and this smells good though. This, it's. I don't wear oh, it because it's Oh, and this too, stuff is really amazing too. And this is really amazing. I. Um, this is my. They don't did make you, it anymore. Did you know and keep your eyes open? This is going to be a new section of our videos together. Keep your eyes open if you see it in the back of a, a pharmacy somewhere and it's. Get it. 
and this it stuff has is so good. a golden cap as opposed to the 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 silver cap that you see today. Okay. This is the original one. She's got one. vintage vintage. I have vintage vintage, and I am very proud of it. <laughs> and this smells almost the same. Oh my god, this I think. No, never mind. I think this actually turned. It does Did have I a bit of. It? There's a bit of turning. In Dang! There. Sorry, I haven't sprayed it in forever. Cause I no, actually it's it's opening up. It's opening up. Cause 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 I'm stingy. I'm like with the stuff that's hard to find. I'm stingy, so I don't spray it. I just smell it. It's it's not bad. It's not bad. Mm, Let me have you turning. try this one. This one's really okay. good, actually. This is a pretty modern one. This is from Caron. A memoir. A memoir comme je suis. Have mm -hmm. you tried it? Uh, yes, and I also have. Name comme moi, and I have Aimé moi as well, the vintage feminine from back oh, when. Back when, huh? It's a bit nutty. It smells good. It's hazelnutty. Yeah, it's hazelnutty. It's That's fun. What is it? Hmm. That's really good. Really, I've really seen good. I've seen this um, project very uh, small bubbles, but really fuzzy, like textural bubbles on um, uh, like knits when you wear it on clothes that are knitted mm. maybe the airing does something to it is really it's just like that cozy very nice very cozy yes. so what do you tell a woman that shies away from vetiver because they consider it a masculine note but what, what do you how do you get them to break into wearing vetiver fragrances well this is a very complex question because first of all even if you ask people why they do something they may not give you the right answer b because they don't know it or they're not comfortable revealing. Why would somebody shy away? I'm not concerned with being perceived as a masculine woman. One, because, uh, sh fucking what? Sorry. <laughs> you can, you can edit this. No, but one, because, uh, the people who think that way are not in my audience. I don't have friends or, 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 or people around me or prospective lovers who care about these things. Those are not my people. So whatever they think is their business. Or I don't worry about that because I don't see this making me more masculine. Maybe the way I drink makes me more masculine. Maybe the way that I can kick your ass or the fact that I can <laughs> kick anybody's ass. Don't kick anybody's me, ass. Could make me masculine, but wearing uh, vetiver is not what chips at my femininity, you know? So if somebody has worries, my first question to them would be why? And who is it that they, they get smelled by? Because if they care about how they're being perceived, then that's a conversation. If they care about how their conditionings works and how they feel in their skin when mm. they wear it, that's a different story. So if masculinity is what bugs them or are worried about, then I could direct them through um, the path of finding a more feminine fragrance if you want. Uh, one stop on this path would be this, I think. Another discontinued fragrance. Another discontinued fragrance. You grabbed so maybe all the discontinued. I brought the rare ones or the discontinued ones mm -hmm. because I think it's important to compare. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And again, if you see it in some small shop somewhere, Get buy it. it. Um, this is a good one too. Maybe this is a this, more... This Creed is one of the best Creeds ever, I think. Yes. I don't personally uh, enjoy many of the things that Creed does, not makes, does politics and all that stuff. <laughs> but uh, this is um, a Vitiver Geranium. Geranium. So good. I consider this somewhere more unisex, if you want. Okay. I think um, the Geranium, which is usually um, also used to imprint a rose Rosiness, tinge, yeah. Makes it floral. Um, and and I, f I feel like this is a very well, good summer. Well, what do you think summer. about the A Memoir comes, Comme Je Suis? Yeah, it's this got is that definitely, nuttiness. Definitely, definitely in the unisex territory. Okay. So that's, you know, I would gently coach them towards things that they little consider. Little by little, baby steps, huh? Right. Um, <laughs> okay. Or unisex, whatever that means. Unisex steps. Unisex steps. <laughs> yeah. So tell us about this, this other one. It's so good. This is really really good from l'artisan first of all i'm a big fan of laporte i love the way his brain works i love this is what Jean laporte? he does well laporte is l'artisan laporte created l'artisan he and also he created, created maître parfumeur yeah. uh, later this later. is 79 the house was 79 and then maître was 88 i think it was earlier 
1979. Oh, okay. He created okay. Lactisa. Um, a cœur de vetiver sacré. So the heart of a sacred vetiver is one of the older goldies from Lactisa. I, it's good. It's good, guys. I love it so much. I hoard it. I have another big bottle of this, and I gave one away to celebrate something important at some point on Instagram. I think. Oh, and you know who is this? Um, Calavant. Calavant. Yes. Was. Oh, him. He he used to be part of. Uh... He co-created this. Oh, okay. Nick. 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 Can we spray? Yes. I'll just do. Well, that didn't come out very well. Okay, there. <laughs> um, I have a bottle too. Oh, it's good. <laughs> it's a fruity one. It's a it's a fruity and again for me uh, a lot of white tea comes out of this. Particularly this is good. On this skin. is good, guys. If you guys don't know that one, try and find a bottle. It's really really good. This is probably Mulberries the very like first such very first L'Artisan fragrance I've ever purchased. Really? Like going back to like 2012. This is this is brilliant. Brilliant work, Nick. Um, Nick Gallivant. Uh, yeah, I, I there, there are no words for this. This is this is one of those things that um, will stay with me, and if I find it, I buy it because we have to. Let's go to another very popular one, Sycamore. This is uh, th this is the one I love the most in their collection. Uh, it doesn't really love me back. Oh. Uh, actually, Coromandel. Uh, plays much better on my skin for some odd reason um, but this is and I don't like Chanel you don't like Chanel I don't like her because she was a freaking Nazi that's why I don't <laughs> <laughs> I have my problems with Chanel particularly because I love Schiaparelli and what she represented oh my god I saw the best Schiaparelli exhibit in Paris I bet you did that was amazing oh. it smells yeah. good it's There's good. very much smokiness there and lots of lemoniness under there, like the lemons. I like the labdanum in this. And oh, you do? Yeah. And after an hour, it becomes very gooey, but in, in a I was correct. It's not way. really labdanum. Laudanum. One, one, one of our cohorts correct. Labdanum. Yeah, labdanum. <laughs> Laudanum. There you go. Laudanum. That's fine. Laudanum. Was that the Latin way to say it? Yes. So what else do you want to show us from your collection? Oh, um, there are two... Well, let's let, let me show you this. I don't know this brand at all. Chris Rusak, um, he's local to California actually. He operates in um, uh, in LA, and they have a very interesting group. I don't get to talk about them uh, too often, but they're they're a few creators that uh, mix perfumery and other arts. Hmm. Um, they have a studio that's uh, it's in a co-working space kind of a thing, and they it's throw ideas the back and forth. It's not the art and olfaction, is it? No. No. Um, I think Chris is very talented and there's something else. Um, I don't know anything about him. That's Tell me. This is called 33. 33. And this is the best uh, modern alternative, even though it's its own thing, to uh, the Annie Gutel fan favorites. So it's a salty vetiver. It's a very briny, very briny vetiver, but it's so squeaky clean that it zings. I love it. Interesting, yeah. Yeah, this is really deep and rooty. Mm -hmm. I'm not getting the and brine much. Really? So I'm it looks like this. The... Usually he signs them on the uh, on the butt of the bottle. It's Wait, pretty well, I haven't See? seen that. But you have to oh, you have to look at okay. it like this oh, through here. See? How clever is that? Is isn't it? It's like written by hand. I think this is very rooty to me. Yeah, I'm I not getting the brine though. No salt. Maybe on skin? I don't know. Maybe on, on, on skin, my yeah. skin it gets, it's really it gets good, salty. Though. It's really I good. love it. I think really I think good. it's a very, very... So it's very, 33? Is that what it's, it's called? On, it's called 33. Um, and since we're talking about indies, um, I want to bring this up. I have two that are very dear to my heart and one is Vetiver Coeur. Um, from April Aromatics. Um, you know April, right? It's yeah, a, I it's met a, her, yeah. It's Many times. All She's very nice. Natural, organic brand if you're into the, uh, that uh, sort of thing sustainable not tested on animals um, and she's she looks like nice. an angel yeah she's pretty <laughs> she's like very like an elf um, and vetiver coeur is a very friendly solar vetiver oh. which i see as if the oh wow right that's like sunshine right 
That's a that's this it's is like a, a meadow. This, this is the kind of vetiver that you would get a woman that's not into vetiver. Totally. And it's, it's very friendly. Unisex. It doesn't get um, sharp when you're smelling it. Smells like at the all. beach. A little bit, yeah. It's grass. It smells like grass, like Grassy, reeds. Yeah. It's really, really nice. Wow, I didn't and know that was so good. Gentle on the skin. I, I love it. This is this is probably my, my next vetiver. I have her testing kits, and this by of course was one of the first that I reached for. That's good. But this is uh, definitely uh, one of it. And since we're talking about testing kits, you know, I don't know how we're going to test this. What is a testing kit? A testing I kit. I mean, is, what is this testing kit? Is what I mean. Oh, so, uh, this is Sultan Pasha. Oh, okay. So he's got a vetiver? Uh, he's got a vetiver. It's called Vetiver Blanc. But I don't know how to take it out. I brought this because if you've don't never poke my eye out with that. seen uh, Sultan Pasha, you know I love him. I've been talking about him ad not. I know him personally. So this is uh, how his testing kits come. They're so small, like you get lost in them uh, because they're precious oils. And his uh, Vetiver Blanc here. Well, how are we going to test it? So this is how I do it. You can do it however you want, with a needle, with a whatever. And he t he he writes the numbers. Wow. I don't think on these. Okay. They are so tiny. They're so they're less than an inch thing. And you open this thing over here okay. like this. Okay. And it, there's and you stick it in. And you st hopefully a different one for a different thing. So you get one smear of something. I can't even. Do you want to put it somewhere? Okay, that's an oil right there. That's an oil. It it's doesn't, a sticky, it's... gooey oil. Wow. Wow. What do you think? That's actually really good. It smells like eggplants. <laughs> <laughs> like bubble ganoush. Now you. I've smoky. got bubble ganoush on my mind. <laughs> that smells Sm like bubble ganoush. Sm smoky, right? Oh, it's very smoky. But it's light. It's not. It's not dark. I don't get darkness from this. No, it's bright, but it's dense. It's Very so dense. dense. But that's why you need only one, like, one smear. Wow. So I it's know, a very but I'm different... getting eggplants from it. Okay. Show me. It's good. I love it. It's good. Uh, so those are those are the indies that I would that I would go for, and I did go for. You did go for. Okay. <laughs> so. so why don't we try this one, Le Loden from uh, Jacques Pat. Mm -hmm. Do you know the house? Yes, I actually bought a vintage of theirs, uh, the green water, in the vintage um, matte, like a, like a matte glass bottle, like this one. You know, you can't, it's not shiny. It's, oh. What do you call it? Frosted. Frosted, thank you. Yeah, no. Hmm? Mm -mm. I love, I love Fa. I think it's t too sharp. I, th I think there's a like an industrial patchouli. There is patchouli here. It's like metallic almost. I feel like it's killing the vetiver because that's the point, right? We're talking about vetiver centric. This is vetiver, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is the low done. I, I, I really like this one I feel like, because I love patchouli. It I is know. sharp. But I feel it's drown drowning the vetiver, and vetiver is easy to drown. Really? It's, it's such it's a. It's so powerful, though. Too much? It's almost mentholy, the, the mentholy kind of... I can see the mentholy, of, uh, mentholy touch. Patchouli. Here's Sultan Vetiver. Mm -hmm. Do you know this one? Yeah. What are your thoughts on this? It's one of my favorites at uh, Nishane. This and Saffron Colonisé. Oh yeah. I know that one. Hmm. This is very... Let me smell to it. To me, this is boozy. On my skin, when I put it on, it's a little boozy in the very etheric kind of... Um, um, I don't remember what no, it's called. No, it has... The, the, the winemaking process has a stage when it's still sweet, but it starts turning into Fermenting. alcoholic. Yeah, but it's it's not acrid. It's just a... I don't remember what it's called. I think it's called must, the same as in... Um, must? Mm-hmm. M-U-S-T. Like must de Cartier? Yeah, but I don't think that one has. No, this is uh, any really connection. earthy to me. It's very dense. It's very. It's almost like moldy. It has a moldiness about it. Uh, to me, it has a raisiny, fruity. Um, yeah, this is good. Really very good. deep, really deep. Yep. What else do you want to show us? I have this that I also recommend. Uh, I bought these on a whim 
on Sears.com a long time ago. I do Sears. that. I didn't know it's a thing. Now I found out it's a thing. But I was browsing. I'm like, I want to see things I don't know about. Let's see what that is. And I found this. It seemed like the bottle is made with money. <laughs> it seemed like an expensive bottle. It looked big. And I bought all three of them. Huh? I had three. So I'm like, it was 40 bucks each. I'm like, sure. Let's see what this house is about. In the meantime, of course, they're discontinued. That was gray market leftovers, probably. Mm. Who, uh, who knows what Sears gets? Profumi, profumo, profumo di Firenze. Firenze. So it's Florence fragrance. Um, and 1954. And this is called Terra Rosa. Red earth. Red earth. Red clay, if you want. Terra Rosa. Um, the other ones are Dolce Prospettiva and something else. I kept buying these until there were no more to buy and giving them to people. I think it's a really, really... It's um, very salty here. Yes, but crisp, um, masculine, if you want. Oh, I like this. Clean, very classic. It kind of very reminds Italian. me of the Anico A little bit. A little bit. Uh, but easier. Yeah. So it's... it's softer. Very, it's a very softer. Very Italian uh, style. Um, and then I found out that these, because I couldn't find out anything, they were not on any forums. And then I found out that these are made by the same guy who of made... Of Boys 1920. Yes. Enzo Gallardi. Enzo Gallardi. And he made these as a small production project, whatever, for his own pleasure. This is really good. And it's really good. Do they the have other ones anymore? are very good too. No. No. Oh. Um, this I found... This is my spare bottle. <laughs> I use it. You have I spare bottles like me? Of some, you know, but look, this this has been used, yeah. you know. No, it's good. I, hundreds this of bottles, good. it's something. And um, I found this in England, actually, and somebody, like, sent them PayPal, they bought it for me, and then oh. somebody brought it over How at some nice. point. How nice. How nice. So this no, that's is, good. That's this good. This is a spare. That's really good. Really Show good. me. All right, so we've got uh, something from Mancera, Vetiver Sensual. Okay. Have you tried? No. I actually reviewed this on Saffron Bon. Okay. Vetiver Sensual. I think this is the um, the most accessible vetiver you can get. This one? Mm hmm It's easy. It's very non-manchera, to be honest. No, it's definitely not man manchera. Mm hmm Well, <laughs> I go by Italian, right? Manchera. Very easy but to wear. Montale Manchera. Montale Manchera. Do you have anything else to show us here? I have one that's an odd one. This one? Yes. Uh, Dr. Vranje? Vranjes? Nushtiu. I don't know. Nushtiu? Vranjes. I've been to their store in Florence. No sé. Uh, so it's a, it's a very small house that used to make fragrances that are very, very concentrated. They're like 20%. Um, extra Estrato, whatever. Very, very concentrated. Estrato? Yes. I learned about them because I was in a thrift store and I saw a bottle that was empty. And I'm like, okay, I'll buy it to research it. Before I got home, my whole purse was like exploding with the smell from Aroma? an empty bottle. Wow. So then I researched it. I bought three or four. Did you get Zagara Patchouli? I did not get the Zagara. I got the uh, Rosa Cassis and I got the one more. I have to remember. Oh, something that is the luxury end of Dana Tabu. And that's Amber something. Oh, I don't know this one. No, that's the same brand. Oh, that's the same brand. So oh. the Rosa Cassis is another and then Ambra something okay. is is very similar to Dana Tabu, but better. Okay. Anyway. Um, well, let's smell this. What is this? This vetiver? is vetiver poivre, which means pepper. Pepper. Um, it's very soapy. Oh, I love this. You do? It's, it's a very, it's an acquired taste. It's super soapy. I don't really like pepper in fragrances much, but he, this is so it, good. It's balanced by this aldehydic Something. There's soap in there, Almost. and there's, there's got to be patchouli in here too. This is good. I know, it's, isn't it interesting? This is good. This yeah. is the best thing you've shown me today. This is so good. They don't even make this anymore. No, they don't. But, again, a lot of you have access to small perfumeries, small shops, travel a lot. When you do travel, please make sure you enter 
the the neighborhood pharmacies particular in particularly in Europe right because pharmacies are always connected to cosmetic little stores they have a counter for something even in Mexico so if you go check the, like the back of some shelf the most forgotten shelf in the store can I get back there and look around please yeah <laughs> and just just check it out that's good girl that is Sometimes so good Sometimes you see them on, you know, I I scour like local oh Craigslists wherever I go to see what they do in Finland or what they have okay. in Germany. So sometimes I just buy and then research later because it's research, right? Okay. okay. Um, so that's I think that's an that's really one. good. That's really good. I wish I had it. Oh, right. and let's try this. Everyone I didn't knows. bring this because I knew you're gonna have it. You have to have it. This is the extreme version. I uh, do you like the original? Or the I like the original. I think is one of the best non-expensive. I can't call them cheap because they're not cheap. They're well made, so I can't call something well made cheap. We've budget, had this conversation budget, before. Budget. Uh, non-expensive. Uh, inexpensive. A expensive. <laughs> we have a new. We need to, a new term for this. Okay. Um, I think Ancronoir is one of those top ten of all times in non-expensive. Top ten of all time. Non-expensive something. I think the extreme is a little bit too extreme. Again, I think it's... I love the extreme. I know. Love, but that's love, because love. you can take a beating in your nose. I can't. You can't? No. My, I over... Short circuits. I over smell. My too. Middle Eastern nose can handle it? <sighs> Anybody has to have a Lalique en Khonor if you, It's definitely worth yes. having it. $20? For anything. For anything. $20, $25, $30. It's not even more than that. It's it's well made. It's very balanced. The original, not this one. <laughs> I, like the, I like the extra. The original is very, very linear for me. Well, yes, because you have how many bottles in there and you you, you need the, the rush, right? You need I to be excited. Yeah. You want the rush. As the rush comes I know. In. Try this one. But when you want something comfortable. Okay. I get it. I get you. Know? you. I get you. This is a mythic vetiver. Yes. You like it? Yes. Yes. Please. What a clear. Mythic vetiver cool. is Alberto Morias's brand. Uh, Mise en sort. Mise en and then I think the last fragrance we're going to talk about is uh, Mask Milano's Hemingway. For me, this is what he what redeemed him. Oh, this brand okay. is what he, redeemed him. I think he's, he's very, very talented. I just don't like what he chose to make um, for a while. And I think the launch of Mizazia kind of like oh. brought him back. Brought him back, <laughs> to yeah. To me. Okay, know? yeah, makes sense. Ah, uh, is this Hemingway? Hemingway. Yeah. This is good. Uh, yeah. I think there's not much to say about this. I don't know what it has to do with Hemingway. I knew and I forgot. Anyway, it's very smoky to me. It is smoky. It's pipey. It's a little. It's, there might be some tobacco in there. It's I think salty. Maybe that's what it is. But I remember there there was an explanation for Hemingway, and mm. I unfortunately do not remember it. I wish I knew you were going to put it up, or at least thought oh. about it, because obviously oh, you would. Oh, we have one more. Forgot about that. This is uh, Tom Ford's grave out of her. Um, Thoughts? Are you a fan of Tom Ford? I like his business Oops. persona and I like his creative direction, particularly what he did or can do for Shiseido. He sold it to... Uh, I know. To Este. I think his timing, I think his business perspective and strategy are impeccable. Done. And now he can live his life. Billions of dollars Billions later. Billions of dollars. Pretty boy that he is. It's got grapefruit. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah. It's okay. It's okay. You know what we don't have here and we should have? Um, Veti Verissimo. Do you have it? Veti, Veti, Veti Verissimo? Who makes it? A Fotorari. No, I don't have that one. It's a good one. Uh, we're missing Veti Vertonka. Who makes uh, no, Hermes? Hermes? No, I don't have that one. Great one. And I, I didn't bring Balda Afrique. Balda Afrique. They're, very, they're very plenty. unisex ones. They're plenty. Um, fat Electrician, which is... Yeah, really good. Yes, Aldo. Um, which I have at home, but there's nothing left. <laughs> I just have the empty bottle and I thought that's lame to bring it. There are plenty of good vetiver. And I find that a lot of smart um, creatives 
choose to work with it because it's exciting you know mm -hmm. for so long it's been in the in the in the background as a woody note for so long it's been used as, as a fixative that now it's it's exciting to to look into it as a main yeah as a the star note mm -hmm. i'm happy it's happening yeah okay well, that's all we have for you today on Vetiver. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's a long time coming. Three and a half years later. Let's hope that it's not another pandemic after this video that um, keeps us away from shooting more. I know. Uh, I've been very much missing in action and not have been producing much content lately because I'm focusing on a few research projects and related to perfumery. But can we tell them that I have an Instagram account? Go ahead and tell them I you have an Instagram. I keep forgetting I'm so bad at She this. has an Instagram account. Come see me on a nose nose on Instagram. Yes. Anyway. That's it. All right, guys. Thanks so much for watching today's video. <laughs> if you have any questions or comments, please list below. Please like this video. Please share it. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook. And I'll be back with more videos very soon. Perhaps I'll bring her back for another video very soon as well. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. -bye. Bye.